So also you need to take a look at uh, uh, one of the things we put together here is kind of a best middle worst for internet. Uh, best of course is internet tier one, T1. Tier one means that they don't get their internet from anybody else. They are an internet backbone provider, Quest, Sprint, Global Crossing, uh, XO, Level 3, uh, Time Warner. Those are all tier one internet providers and you're going to want to be on a uh, for your best possible quality, you don't want somebody who is oversubscribing their internet. Uh, you can either get those at T1, bonded T1s, DS3s, or bigger. Uh, voice optimized circuits, you definitely, uh, there are, right now, Covad offers this option, and we, we actually do sell it. It's a circuit that is separated where voice is optimized over, over data. And then, of course, private network connections that we talked about earlier. The middle road is really... Uh, business cable, metro ethernet, fixed wireless, you really want to stay away. Uh, well, we've seen some success in business class cable, but it's been spotty. Uh, metro ethernet, like Fios, we've seen a, a, some success with that. You definitely don't want to do, you want to do the business version, not the residential version. Remember, you need public IP addresses. Uh, fixed wireless, like Tower Stream, we've seen some, uh, some good success with that. Uh, tier 2 internet providers, just look for good ones, not, uh, uh, not poor ones that have poor networks. You can tell by just hopping on the blogs and checking them out. Uh, residential DSL, you definitely want to stay away from that. You want to stay away from residential cable. Uh, satellite is a is a please do not at all. It's it's terrible. Um, ISDN, BRI, unless you're in the country, you're never going to see that. Uh, wireless, and when I say wireless, in this sense, I mean wireless services like Clearwire or, 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 the, or the like. Uh, that are that are not you know fixed point-to-point -point wireless solutions and then you want to stay away from tier 3 companies companies who buy internet from companies who have it their own backbone so uh, these are typically twice removed from the internet and you're gonna have your worst probably some of the worst quality in that scenario so the next piece to look at is kind of codec choice and bandwidth sizing uh, so if you look at uh, G711 U law best quality carrier codec it's not compressed a codec is the compression of the actual audio as it passes by so uncompressed uh, with all the overhead and all of that toll quality is about 85k of bandwidth per call meaning if you have an internet t1 you could do about 15 to 16 calls uh, concurrently over that t1 then there's g.729 G alpha that is a, another compression that is a compression ratio that allows you to compress the voice down to about 32k per call or th around 30 to 32k per call uh, typically you can get about 35 to 40 calls over a t1 with g729 alpha it's good for low priority calls and seasonal usage spikes it's not good for over tax circuits with high latency and packet loss the idea is to to make sure if you're going to use 729 make sure that you stay in the good side uh, of the last screen that we were on so that internet screen you want to make sure you stay in the good side if you're going to do 729 alpha um, test the codecs over time but size the network initially because you really don't know what your internet or your network's going to be like at first so uh, and your initial testing and your initial setup of the network should be sized uh, for a g.711 G uh, implementation uh, but make sure that you're you definitely want to test 729 though uh, and if you do test it, a lot of phone systems allow you to, to set up a few people in the company with 729 without them knowing. And I definitely would not tell them. You want them to think that everything's the same as always and then go back and ask them, how has your quality been for the last few weeks? And they probably will say, I haven't, couldn't tell a difference. Uh, that's the way you want to do it. If you tell them, they will then start listening really hard and tell you every little thing that they hear. And, and it might have been there before. They just weren't listening for it. Um, also, make sure that your internet access and, uh, and your voice service combined do not average over 90% of your circuit size. Uh, so if your circuit is uh, 1.5 meg, you definitely don't want to uh, tag that too much. It's okay if you spike over that, but you don't want to consistently be averaging over 90% of the circuit. That if you find that, you need to then grow that. Uh, you need to start looking at about 60, 65% utilization. You need to start looking at options to grow. Uh, remember, a pack, a, a lost packet in G729 Alpha is more noticeable than it is in G711 ULaw. So if you if you are compressing voice, of course each packet is more important, and if you lose one, it's going to be noticeable. So also. Uh, let's talk about the carrier side and everybody looks at carriers for cost cost is very important because you want to save money uh, that is the benefit one of the one of the benefits of voice over IP 
Uh, but there are other things you have to consider. If you want private access, so if you want to go with somebody that offers private connectivity, you need to make sure that they offer public internet options in parallel. Uh, you need that resilience. If you choose the public internet, does the carrier support or offer a managed traffic shaping device or QoS device? Uh, does the carrier provide 24 by 7 fully staff support? And I know that sounds like something that everybody puts on their on their book, but there are a lot of uh, business providers that only have business hours, uh, weekday business hours, and if you you know, find out even if you're not a 24 by 7 or weekend operation, if you run into a problem at 4 o'clock on a Friday and you can't get it fixed, it's terrible to know. It's a horrible feeling over that weekend to know that you're probably going to be down half the day on Monday. Uh, so you really want somebody that you can reach uh, not only um, triage, but you want to be able to reach live engineering support 24 by 7. Also, uh, is your carrier available in all of the locations that you have today or ones that you might have in the future? If you have five sites, you don't want a carrier that only can do one. And if you know you're going to be expanding into New York and they're not there, you probably want to look at other carriers. So think a little bit into the future because you don't want to make implementation changes within a, you know, right away. Uh, so also you want to make sure that they've tested with your brand of PBX. Uh, you want to you want a carrier that has a lab that tests PBXs that has a program for that. Now you need to know they're not going to test every feature of the PBX. They're mostly going to do acceptance testing. Your PBX manufacturer should be doing the the actual testing. The PBX the um, the ITSP or the or the carrier uh, needs to just validate that with their lab. Also set up inroads with the PBX manufacturer so that they have uh, cross training cross support uh, so that they can work together if they find a bug. Um, also, check the carrier's track record. Google them. If somebody isn't happy, if, if a lot of their customers aren't happy with them, they will vent online. So take a look at that. Now, every carrier is going to have some people that are mad at them. It's just the way you're not doing business if you don't have a few customers mad at you. But uh, you will see a theme uh, if, if they're not doing their job. Uh, also, ask your PBX manufacturer who they recommend. Um, if you ask us what PBX manufacturer we recommend, we'll be a little bit like Switzerland. Uh, we have a bunch that we work with, and we, we, we like the ones that we've chosen to work with. Uh, PBX manufacturer will be more blunt. They will tell you uh, which carriers they think do a good job, which ones work best with their phone system. So ask them. Uh, also make sure that there are inroads, that they know who our support is, or they who know who the carrier support is, and the carrier support people know at the ITSB know who they are and, and know how to work together.